Welcome. What I'd like to do is show you how to solve word problems with changing angles. So you can, in both of these examples, we're going to use trigonometric functions to uh, find our missing lengths or distances. But what we're going to have is more than one triangle. So we're going to have multiple triangles because the angles of elevation or depression or the angles, whatever, are going to be changing. And you'll kind of see a little bit what I'm talking about as we get into the problems. But again, the same idea of what we've done previously is you know read through the read through the problem underline the important piece of information, and then try to construct a picture of the problem. Now again, since we're using trigonometric functions to go ahead and solve for the missing parts, we're going to need so we're going to need to create some right triangles and because you can only apply the trigonometric functions from right triangles and in these examples we're going to have more than one right triangle so it gets a little confusing that's why I'm only doing kind of two in one because or two in one video because it kind of sometimes takes up a little parts <laughs> excuse me so the first one says your friend is taking your picture from the ground as you ride a hot air balloon she is 100 feet away from the launch site the first picture at the ang at an angle of elevation of 31 degrees the second picture is taken a minute later at an angle of elevation of 76 degrees. How far did you travel between the pictures? All right, so let's go and create a little ground level over here. Doo, doo, doo. So we have a little ground level. I'll just kind of move over here. So we have ground level. Here's your little friend. And here you are in the hot air balloon. And the first picture is, now again, you are 100 feet away. Okay, so the first picture is taken at an angle of elevation of 31 degrees. Now, the only thing we know is that you are 100 feet away, right? That's it. Um, and we know the angle of elevation. So we don't know how, uh, how far you are away from, like, let's say their line of sight would be your horizontal line, right? Because in this case, the ground is not going to be angle of elevation. If you're taking a picture and you're looking up, that means your horizontal sight line is going to be your angle of elevation. So I'm going to draw like a nice little horizontal line and saying that's my angle of elevation. Now we don't know your height right here, which I'm going to call height one. That is the height, you are, how high you are from your, um, from, for your first picture, or at least from the horizontal sight line. Then the second picture takes place at an angle of elevation of 76 degrees. Okay. And this distance we will call h2. And again, the only thing we know on this one is your uh, the only thing we know on this one is again your angle of elevation is 76 degrees, and then your height, which we'll call h2. So basically, what we have is we have two triangles. We have triangle number one, which has an angle of elevation of 31 degrees, and again your distance 100 feet away. For picture number two, nothing changed with the distance you are away. The only thing that changed is your angle of elevation. So therefore, the height that you have traveled from the first picture to the second picture is basically going to be, so the distance that you traveled, right? Because that's far, how far did you travel? Your distance is basically being equal to h2 minus h1. So h2 minus h1, where again, h2 is the height of your second of your second picture, and h1 is the height of your first picture. So now all we got to do is figure out what is h1 and what is h2. Well, we have an angle and a side of your trigonometric function, of your, of your triangle. That's enough information for us to be able to figure out what is your height. All we need to do is figure out which trigonometric function should we use for the opposite and the adjacent. And that example is going to be tangent. So I'm going to create a trigonometric function for both one. So for the first one, I'll say tangent of 31 degrees is equal to h1 over 100 feet. And the second one, I'll say tangent of 76 degrees is equal to height 2 over 100 feet. So therefore, height 1 is equal to um, 100 feet times tangent of 31 degrees. And height 2 is equal to 100 feet times the tangent of 76 degrees. Now I know I'm kind of running out of little space here, so I'll kind of put these down low. So now all I'm going to do is use my calculator to go ahead and evaluate. Just make sure when you're plugging these into your calculator that you have your calculator in degree mode. So therefore, I will type in, let's see, 100 times the tangent of 31. And I'm going to round this to the nearest degree. 
Well, actually, yeah. So I'll say height 1 is equal to 60.0860619. And height 2 is going to be 100 times tangent of 76, which is going to equal 401.078. 0934. Now I'm going to want to, I'm um, not going to round these, so I'm going to use the whole decimal point. So I'm going to subtract, so D equals H2 minus H1, which is going to be, so I'm just going to take that whole answer, 401. Uh, again, that's feet, and that's feet. And I'm just going to subtract them using my calculator because it's much easier to use the whole value um, when using the calculator because you can save those values or you can just really easily quickly type it in. And I get 340. And let's round to the nearest foot. I don't think I said that. How far do you travel in pic between pictures? Round to the nearest foot. So let's do 341 feet. OK. Um, so for the next one, it says an observer in a lighthouse is 320 meters above sea level. Uh, an observer in a lighthouse 320 feet above sea level observes two ships offshore. The levels of the pressions respectively are 4 degrees and 7.5 degrees respectively. How far are the ships? So again, we have, uh, let's see, you have a lighthouse, right? You have an angle, a horizontal angle depression because you have like this ocean, right? So there's your nice little ocean. Then we have angle depression. So from your horizontal sight line, remember angles of elevation are going up, angles of the depression are going down. So we have two ships. We have an angle of the first ship here is going to be at 7.5 degrees. Okay, and then we have our second ship. I don't want to write on the block. And that second ship has an angle of depression of 4 degrees. Yeah. So basically, what they're asking is now, what exactly, how far away are these ships? How far? is this distance, right? So again, we want to look at our two different triangles. We have our first triangle. We can create a right triangle here. And I can also create a right triangle here. Actually, let's make this one with red. So I can say the distance of the red ship and the distance of the black ship. So the red ship looks like this. Oh, and again, that's 320 feet. That's very, very important here. The distance is 320 sorry, meters. That's very important because now we know that this angle is 320 meters. It's a right angle. And we have an angle of depression of 7.5. So we want to be able to figure out what length is this. And let's call this x. Instead of doing h1 and h2, let's call that x. And then my other triangle has the same height, which is 320. 320 meters, the only difference is the angle of depression is 4 degrees instead of 7.5. So now we're just going to go down to 4, 4 degrees, and we're going to call this y. Now again, how far is the distance between them? You guys can see the distance between them is going to be the difference in y to x. So we can say the distance is equal to y minus x. So basically, let's just go ahead and figure out now what exactly is their distance. So if you look at this, um, we need to figure out our trigonometric functions, right? Now again, our trigonometric functions uh, is based on this angle. You can see we have the opposite and the adjacent. So I can say the tangent of 7.5 degrees sorry, is equal to opposite 320 meters over x. Whereas this one is the tangent of 4 degrees is equal to 320 meters over y. Now, to solve for x and y, basically what I'm going to do to simplify this, I'm just going to work on this one at a time. To solve this, I'm going to multiply by an x on both sides, and then I'm going to have to divide by tangent of 7.5 degrees. And we did this both times. Uh, I did this in previous videos. So to shorten this up, I'm just going to solve for x, which would equal 320 meters divided by the tangent of 7.5. And again, if you need help on why we did that, just go and take a look at my videos for, in, uh, for solving using inverse. And I go through problems like this where y is equal to 320 meters divided by the tangent of 4 degrees. So now I can solve for x and y. 
So x is going to equal 320 divided by the tangent of 7.5, which is 2430.641316 meters. And then I do 320 divided by the tangent of 4. And that's going to equal 4,576.213202. OK, so now all I need to do is I mentioned to find the distance, I just need to subtract those two values. So I'm just going to subtract them because I have them saved in my calculator. 641316. And then I'm going to round to the nearest meter. Uh, which will be 2,146 meters. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve trigonometric um, word problems with trigonometric functions when you have more than one angle or changing angles. Thanks. Da-da. <laughs>